Three women bound by a common thread, determined to achieve, innocently eager to face one of sport's sternest tests. These women long to conquer the Clico Marathon in their first attempt. We used to watch persons running the marathon, cheer them along, give a clap here or there. And I always felt I'm a very physical person. I like a lot of outdoor activity, whether it's hiking, running, or whatever. So I always had it at the back of my mind that one of these days I would run a marathon. And every year when it's on the television, I would say, you know, I really, one of these days I will run a marathon. It's something I always put off. It's just that recently I decided, you know, this is one of the things I've always wanted to do. So I'm going to set it as a goal, work towards it, and really, that was it. There was this guy from our IS department. He called me and he asked me if I want to run the marathon, to go and sign up for it, actually. I was coming from training. I usually train on afternoons. And he sent me the next day to, to sign up. And I signed up. Well, my sister did one three months ago in San, San Francisco. And um, she told me about the satisfaction you feel and the completion of one and what a challenge it is to tr train for it and, and so forth. And that's why I decided to do it. Three faces of the 18th edition of the Clico Trinidad and Tobago Marathon. Ready or not, each will engage in a battle beyond all of their expectations. By their own choice, this is their destiny. Stay with us. More RunFest action coming up. RunFest 2000, a new dimension for a new millennium. It's a festival of races. The Clico Trinidad and Tobago Marathon remains the premier event, but a 5K and 10K corporate relay have been added. All told, I think we have about 50 um, foreigners in the race. More than 50, sorry, if you include the Caribbean people. So we are satisfied with that. And uh, um, with respect to the 5K, we are now, as I understand it, going up to 900, I guess, by the morning. They'll close off at the 1,000. We're rounding off there. Full marks there. Um, they really fell short some, but still, given it's the first attempt, I think we are satisfied. So overall, I think we are, we are quite satisfied with what we are seeing. And it's just for us to put down a good race tomorrow and hope that everything is in place. With a total prize package of over $225,000 at stake, there are incentives for everyone, and Trinidad became a hub of activity as the day drew closer. Among those arriving was a small group from Norway, including two serious marathon contenders. I've no, never been in Trinidad, so it will be exciting for me. I'd love to come here, and I look really forward to do the race. Yeah. The day before the Clico Marathon is like the calm before the storm. Roadrunners hosts a breakfast run, while sponsors Clico provides overseas entrance with a bus tour of the course. In the cool hills of the Central Range, members of Athletic Central have made a tradition of arranging a pasta lunch the day before the race. Runners relax, reflect on marathons past, and share in the brotherhood of the road. We find that um, the mental preparation before the race is as equally important as training. So what we have decided to do over the years uh, since 1984 is on the day of the day before the race we get together as runners after months of hard training we get together to get away from the rigors of training sit down talk laugh eat look at movies um, relative to running so that they can be mentally prepared Running the marathon has become something of a religious experience for the road warriors of Athletic Central. 
it's an unusual covenant between man and road. The thing about running is, is a very lonely sport. Nobody can get into you and, and, and feel what you're feeling. Everybody, I guess at 20 miles, will be under extreme um, pain and st stress. And, and it really doesn't apply, it doesn't help you at that stage. What really helps you is, is all the, the miles that you have put in before. Because it's only then, it, it, it's like putting money in a bank, as we usually say. If you didn't put any money in the bank before, you'll have none at 20 miles. Well, I can tell you this much, that um, we are extremely in a sort of state of adrenaline overflow, I would say. Adrenaline overflow, meaning that, you know, there's a lot of tension and we try, as, as, as Alan just uh, mentioned, we try to get over that by coming together and uh, trying to talk and laugh with each other. But uh, as human beings, you know, we have this adrenaline overflow that is really running haywire in our systems. The marathon. This grueling race has its own mysterious lure and in its grip is Tracy, Heather and Sintra. These three women go for broke next. Stay with us. The Clico Run Fest will be right back. Participation is on the upswing. Over 450 runners were entered for the Clico Marathon 2000. Tension filled the air as the seconds ticked by. Out of the darkness and mass of bodies emerged the principals, queuing on the line. As expected, the top guns shot to the front in a tight pack. Most of the race was, however, lost in the Shogunas morning. At the back of the race, however, Sintra and Heather have begun their odyssey of endurance. Tracy was lost to the darkness. I have visualized every step of the way. I know the road from Shogunas to Port of Spain, as I indicated to you, I live Shogunas. So I visualize how I'm going to, you know, I'm going to use, like for example, Shogunas to Karani as a warm-up jog. From Karani to Kirup, I will run at a certain pace. And then from Kirup to Port of Spain, I'm going to cruise, run a certain way so I don't overextend myself. Um, Port of Spain to Digo Martin is another run, the same pace as I run in Karani. And from Port of Spain to the over, however I get back there, if I have to crawl, that's fine. The communities of Central Trinidad make the marathon a unique event with their enthusiastic support. The supporters, like the ball, Abdul, you don't eat meat, or they say, move on, Abdul, you're looking good. All of this is, is, is psychological food, is nourishment, is protein for us to finish that marathon. In the women's race, Kenyan Salina Churcher was having her way with Guyana's Adebimi Charles and Venezuelan Wilma Ruiz in close contention. It's, it was, it, to me, it just started like doing games in a primary school. Um, I chose to run, others chose to play uh, volleyball, play soccer, others chose to do other things, but I chose to run and then I continued running and I'm still running up now. To the front, the pace was relentless. I have pretty good confidence uh, of running well tomorrow, but that is if, you know, the runners, what I'm running against, this, you know, it's gonna do, you know, go out and, and, and work hard in order to run fast. If no one really gonna work hard tomorrow, you know, the race, but might run slow, you know. I predicting it might run slow, it might run fast. It just depends on the runners. 
The humidity was taking its toll on the lead pack and the pace has slowed significantly. Typically, Holassi was to the fore with Ballantyne playing the waiting game. Heather and Sintra were anchored to the rear but plugging on. Somewhere ahead, Tammy Sussler was running with the clock. Oh, I think I'll run my own race. I, I've learned not to go out too fast, especially in the heat. At the 18-mile mark, Paminos Ballantyne made his move, once more winning the duel with Holassi. Further back, Sussler's tactics were beginning to pay off. Oh, I like the competition. Uh, I like marathons. I'm better at the long distance. And I like to, to see the world. At the head of affairs, Ballantyne had the race sewn up. The oval crowd warmed to the marathon champion as he took his fourth consecutive crown. Running here in Trinidad, especially um, in this kind of condition and running those times, I mean, I feel proud of myself. Still a long way from Port of Spain, Sintra and Heather were heading for the Curep Junction. It was a tedious pace, yet they plugged on. I will, you know, pace up myself and keep at that pace until the end. I'm not denying that I will stop and walk and rest, but I will finish. Stay with us. Churchill and Sussler go shoulder to shoulder. Run fast. We'll be right back. I'm from the Rift Valley, um, which is uh, the western part of Kenya. It is high and um, many runners come from there. A lot of runners, mostly the best from, uh, from the country are from there. So, And uh, we also have a tradition of good runners, like Kip Kano is uh, living in my hometown. So, you know, we have a lot of good runners there too. Churcher and Sussler were playing a cat and mouse game. This was clearly going to be a duel to the end. Hometown hero Rani Holassi had once more faltered, but he held on gamely for the runner-up spot. It was another disappointment for the Miami-based local. You know, in a marathon, you think you, you have enough fuel fluid going into the race and, and you know, into the race. But um, I just today, you know, it was really tough on me. Um, you know, Pam was running a really good race, uh, but, you know, it's fortunately, you know, to get dehydrated at, at that point in the race, that's the toughest part, actually, in the race to get dehydrated, and then you have to go through that phase to finish. At the same time, the 10K corporate relay was about to start at the Roxy Roundabout. Back at the finish line, Ness was coming home on tired legs for third place. And at St. Clair Avenue, over 900 runners were set for the 5K. As they set off, Churcher and Sussler were locked in a titanic struggle of wills. You know, as a competitor, all the time you uh, try to focus during the race, um, try to have a good race and finish in a very nice position. Uh, marathon is not an easy race also because um, it's a long distance. But um, it really involves a lot of concentration, a lot of training, and um, physical toughness also. On the Eastern Main Road, Sintra and Heather were having their own battle. It was becoming really hard work for the marathon challengers. 
I want to finish the marathon. I've set that as my first goal, as the goal for this marathon year. So I have no qualms about people passing me. I don't care if the race shuts down and I'm still on the road. I'm going to finish it 26.2 miles because I've made up my mind that's what I'm going to do. The clever American had run her race, a patient one, but the Kenyan had something extra. This is, this is it now, you have to go for it, you know, you have to finish it, regardless of the pain. Every runner will, is feeling the same, you're not the only one, so everybody is fighting to the end, so keep on going. Churcher stepped it up in the dash to the line. With a 2.51.42 clocking, the Clico Marathon had a new women's champion and a new record. So she tried to make move like three times and then she gave up. And then from there I knew, you know, that uh, I was going to leave her at the end because regardless of the injury, I'm a little bit faster than her. And I was running with Selena for up to 25 and a half miles and then she picked it up in the last half mile and I just wasn't able to move my legs. Just couldn't go with her. I wish I could have been just a little bit stronger that last mile. I need to be a little tougher mentally too. <laughs> it's tough to come in second place so close. Former champion Louis Maruis plugged on for third. The mood at the finish line was festive as the marathon heroes continued to come in one by one. Symbolic victories were being celebrated all around. One of the key elements of the Clico Runfest Millennium Celebration was the 5K event. This race brought the widest participation of roadrunners, most of them there for the fun. But there was a bigger purpose. They all wanted to be part of this historic event. At the front of the 5K, however, the Finland-based pair of Sheldon Monderoy and Marco Kotila made this race a serious matter. Running at full throttle, the international track athletes were really making it a stretch. For most, though, it was a lazy Sunday morning jog. For Sintra and Heather, though, there would be no respite with the sun at their backs. It seemed inevitable that the long and lonely road would claim victory. The 5K went to Finland's Marco Kotia, with training partner Sheldon Monteroy seconds behind. There may have been a lot of traffic at the finish line, but for Tracy, the road was clear in Woodbrook. For the first time in her life, Tracy had hit the wall. I think when I faced the wall at the end that I've heard about, I think I'm at the age that I am prepared to be able to deal with it. In my younger single days, I think I, I could have never set such a challenge for myself. This was it. Make or break, Tracy was on her own. At the finish line, the best part of the day for the top runners was unfolding. Somewhere a voice cried, Tracy is coming. Four hours and 28 minutes. Remarkable. She had done it. It was really, really hard at the end. I just felt like giving up, but the sport got me there. I had linked up with a guy about a mile down the road, and he had paced me, and you know, when I saw the finish, I told him, I said, you're gonna come with me, we're gonna sprint it. And he just stuck with me. I said, please don't leave me because I thought if he would. I can't even remember his number, 387 or something. Troubled by a knee injury, Heather was walking, but Sintra was plugging on resolutely. But they were against the clock and needed a miracle to finish within the six-hour time limit. 
Sadly, their race was over. The grand old lady of the road brought a ceremonial end to the marathon. Lynette Granny Luces had finished another marathon. What a jewel! It was a fitting end to Runfest 2000. What a spectacle, what heroics! For Tracy and all the other finishers, it was a day of raw courage. It was a day of accomplishments, even for marathon castaways. Heather and Sintra lost under the scorching sun. My sister told me about that, that feeling that you get, dehydration, nausea that you get. And I was so delirious that I couldn't even say, this is dehydration that I have, let me drink something, because Everett came up to me and tried to make me drink, and I was like, no, if I drink anything, I'll vomit. I just, and I wanted to cry at that point, because it was three miles to go, and I just felt I couldn't move one more step. I couldn't make one more step, and it was just, you know, his persistence for me to drink something and he forced the Gatorade down my throat and I started to feel better. And he ran alongside me and he said, come on, you can do it. And he ran with me. And my parents pulled up and they were like, come on, this is a Savannah. And I just kept praying for one more step, God, one more step, God, one more step. And the support I had at that point, if I didn't, I don't think I would have gotten so close I was, I couldn't have made it through St. James and down to the Oval. For Sintra and Heather to do that after, after seven hours on their own, it's just mind-boggling. That's, that's a true marathon. Celebrate the millennium.